the center of the Serenissima, as the inhabitants of Venice lovingly call their city, is the Piazza San Marco, a square that Napoleon called the largest drawing room in the world. This is surely the city's most visited square and is surrounded by numerous buildings and arcades, such as the new and the old justice buildings. Nearby is a clock tower that dates back to 1496, behind which the Mercaria starts, a confusion of tiny shopping streets. During its most prosperous years, the city-state of Venice was an aristocratic sea republic, at the head of which was the Doge, who was elected for life. The so-called Bridge of Sighs connects the Doge's palace with the city's former prison, the legendary lead chambers in which Casanova was imprisoned and from where he made his spectacular escape. The magnificent Palazzo Ducale was the residence of the Doge. In 1341, the Palace of Palaces was completed, the military symbol of Venice's power. For Venice, 1204 was a wonderful year. Led by the Venetians, the Crusaders attacked Constantinople, capital of the East Roman realm, and the flying lion became Venice's heraldic symbol. The city's largest and most famous church, the Basilica di San Marco, which was built as a palace chapel for the Doge of Venice, is also known as the Golden Basilica because of its outstanding opulence. Almost 2,500 granite and marble columns support the walls of this Byzantine-style building, a central structure above a Greek crucifix with five domes and halls. The main and side facades are decorated with sculptures that illustrate various tales of the city. The city's wealth is evident in its striking architecture. Above the basilica's large main gate, a painting adorns the facade Surrounded by angels and above the clouds, Jesus kneels beneath the burden of the cross. Jacopo Sansovino's sacred bronze door and a golden shining altar known as the Pala d'Oro are part of the cathedral's opulent furnishings. Over 4,000 square meters of golden mosaics form, after Sicily's Monreale Cathedral, the second largest mosaic surface in the world, and gave the church its golden nickname. Bible scenes and various episodes of city life, and also the legend of Marcus, are included here. In the large dome, the golden mosaic depicts the 12 apostles. While observing these great works of art, a journey to the Orient of long ago begins. As a booty of war, 
These four ancient bronze horses were set into the facade of the cathedral. The floor of the basilica is covered with an array of colourful marble illustrations. Also, an impressive golden lion that demonstrates the glorious military and economic power of this period for the well-being of the church. Gothic marble statues and mosaics in Byzantine style decorate the facades of the basilica. In between are wonderful Moorish elements that indicate the Venetians' attraction to foreign influences. This harmonic connection of styles created a building that is unique in Occidental architecture. The city's vast wealth was not only evident in its fashionable clothes, jewellery and gondolas. Everything was decorated and gilded, as was the Doge's palace, the residence of the head of the city. On a granite column, the Lion of Marcus stands as though poised to fly, between fantasy and reality. The outline of the collection of buildings on the Piazza San Marco is world famous. The Doge's Palace, the Basilica and the Campanile are rare forms of architectural harmony and unity. The Carnevale de Venezia has a long tradition at the beginning of the 15th century and to organize the carnival a number of young aristocrats met and founded the Compagnie de Calza. This tradition of masks and costumes is still practiced to the present day. In old workshops the carnival's various masks are created from leather papier-mâché and beeswax in the traditional way and artistically painted with watercolours. During carnival time, the city takes on a special ambience. The masked spectacle around the Piazza San Marco attracts countless tourists from around the world. The entire city wears makeup and masks, and in all the faces and on all the masks, there is all the irresistible joie de vivre and sweet melancholy of this magnificent city, a fragile legend of a bygone time.